Hi folks, this video continues the discussion of Kierkegaard's fear and trembling. Uh, we're gonna start with a preface and uh, what Kierkegaard says about uh, the state of philosophy. He has these uh, amusing passages where he's talking about all the scorekeepers who are keeping track of uh, the current philosophical developments. He says, everybody is unwilling to stop with doubting everything. What, <clears throat> what is this obsession with doubt? Uh, this is actually uh, an important philosophical reference which Kierkegaard would is, expect his audience precisely to understand. <clears throat> it becomes clear, um, he comes out with it when he says, but Descartes didn't it, did it, didn't he? So the reference here is that Descartes was, had this huge central philosophical role starting with the scientific revolution. And, and Descartes' method is called the method of doubt. Uh, not only that, but Descartes um, was a Christian philosopher. Descartes thought that the method of doubt actually is the right way to do science and help you understand how the sci scientific practice works. And it's also the right way to understand what faith is and to, um, to know that God exists uh, and have the um, rational basis of Christianity. So let me say something about Descartes' philosophy in the background here, because this is um, really important for Kierkegaard's purposes. So like I said, Descartes comes in this period of the early 1600s, um, who, was a, who was a proponent both of the scientific revolution and of Christian philosophy. And Descartes had this particular method of doubt. He was so influential, like all the philosophy in the Western, uh, in the European tradition was a reaction or made reference to Descartes after him. He was that kind of pivotal central of a figure. Um, so let me say what Descartes' method of doubt is because that's what Kierkegaard is, is commenting on here. Descartes asks us to go through this sort of thought experiment. Imagine uh, what we wanna do is we wanna have absolutely firm foundations for our scientific beliefs. So we shouldn't accept anything uh, that could be doubtable. Let's see if we can use this method to see if there's anything that would be absolutely certain. <clears throat> so we're going to just engage in a process. Let's see anything that's doubtable. Let's suspend our belief about it. So could I doubt that there's, you know, it's a beautiful sunny day in Seattle right now. Well, maybe I'm actually dreaming and, you know, dreams can be really lifelike. And sometimes when I'm dreaming, I don't realize that I am. So maybe that's the case. But if, if you don't think dreaming is a radical enough possibility, then then imagine this, what if you're being deceived by an evil genius whose sole goal is to feed you sensory experiences so that you feel like you think you're in this beautiful sunny day in Seattle, but actually um, you're somewhere else entirely. Maybe you're stuck in a vat in this post-apocalyptic earth a vat of fluids because you're a battery for uh, a giant set of artificial intelligent malevolent machines. Uh, only if you could see through this, this uh, facade and come to the true knowledge, would you be able to break out of this, um, this realm of doubt? Okay, so Descartes' thought experiment is a little bit like invoking the matrix. Imagine that we're being deceived by an evil scientist or an evil artificial intelligence or just an evil demon. Couldn't it be the case that all these things that I believe are true are actually false? So Kierkegaard thinks this, or no, excuse me, Descartes thinks this is the most radical form of doubt possible, this kind of evil genius doubt. And this is my question for you. Can it make me doubt all of these things? Does it, is it possible to doubt everything on this list? So what I want you to do, think of all the things on this list and think, is any of them certain? Does any of them resist this completely radical process of doubt? Okay, I mean you to pause your videos. I want you to think through it. Take your pick. What would be the most certain thing according to you? Okay, I, I think I could doubt that I live in Seattle if I'm, if I'm being deceived in the matrix or something else. Certainly I could be deceived that it's sunny tomorrow or anything else that is based on evidence. Maybe even mathematics, maybe my conception of basic numbers is being warped by an evil genius. But Descartes says, but wait a minute, could, he, could some evil genius being de deceive me that I don't even exist and I only think I exist? Well, Descartes says, wait a minute, if I think I exist, I must still be existing. If I'm there to be deceived by the evil genius or if I'm only dreaming or whatever, I still have to exist to be the subject of deception. So this I cannot doubt. As long as I'm even thinking, then I must uh, be in existence. So this is Descartes' famous, I think, therefore I am. This, according to Descartes, is the one thing or the most important central thing that survives the method of radical doubt. And that's the basis on which Descartes then er erects his positive philosophy, all the things that he builds on that secure foundation. So according to Descartes, and according to many followers in this tradition after him, this method of doubt is the deep, an important way to do, to make philosophical progress. So 
Uh, if you've ever wondered what this famous cogito ergo sum line of Descartes is, um, then now you know it. This thing, this Kierkegaard thinks is a disaster. This, this is what he wants to react against. Kierkegaard thinks the traditional Christian understanding of the, of the story of Abraham and Isaac is wrong. He thinks traditional philosophy, all of his contemporary philosophers are wrong. So he is a radical individualist thinker who wants to reject all of this. Because what Descartes goes to do on the basis of this method of doubt is then he comes to show that religious belief survives doubt too. Descartes thinks he can prove that God exists with just as much certainty as he can prove that he exists through this method of doubt. So really on this Cartesian picture, what we do is we start with sort of simple-minded faith. This, you know, we believe things just because that's what we've been told or, or we've been raised in a certain way. In order to have like true sophisticated faith, we have to engage in this method of doubt, according to Descartes, and then we can see that what survives that doubt are these things like the existence of God. And Descartes gives actually multiple proofs of God's existence that he thinks are immune to this process of doubt. So if we now, so good, sophisticated religious belief or true faith according on this Cartesian picture is one deeply based on reasons. It's a rational accomplishment. It's a philosophical accomplishment. This, this Kierkegaard thinks is terrible. There's everything is wrong with this picture. And so we can only understand Kierkegaard's view if we see him setting up Descartes as the dupe at the beginning of the story here. And his picture is gonna be the opposite of this in every way. So we sh you should, when you engage with Kierkegaard's text, it should not come across to you that based on reasons and a rational understanding of faith is actually the true conception of religious belief according to Kierkegaard. Now, what Kierkegaard's view actually is, um, now we're gonna get beyond the preface and we're gonna dive into some of his positive views in the next video. Okay, thanks.